Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about SQL Lite. In our last two videos, we have been working on a grocery list app. Both apps had a list of grocery items, a method to add a grocery item, and a method to delete the grocery item. In the first version though, if you closed the app and reopened it, the grocery list was no longer there. In the second version, we connected it to Cloud Firestore so your data would still be there, but you are required to have good internet access to interact with Firestore, and if this grocery list is just for you and will only be used on one device, then that's an excessive step that may be best to be avoided. So we are going to connect it to a local database on your device instead, specifically SQLite. This app will have an app bar, a floating action button, and a list view to show the groceries. Our grocery item will be simple. It will just have an identifier and a name. And then we will have a database helper that will help us with all of our database actions. When you first start the app, it will attempt to get the groceries from the database. Since this is our first time to run the app, it will just show no groceries in list. When you type a grocery item into the taskbar and press the save button, it inserts the grocery item into the database and then on refresh, it grabs the groceries from the database again. And since it found some, it shows them. And when you press on a grocery item and hold it, the grocery item will disappear. And to round out full CRUD operations, we'll do a quick and dirty update option that will allow you to change the grocery item, plus a few bonus items along the way. Let's go ahead and start by doing our typical tutorial boilerplate. I'm going to import material. I'm going to set up main and run app. We're going to do a stateful widget here by typing in STFUL. We will do material app and scaffold and an app bar. We'll go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. And there we go, looking good so far. So now in place of the text in the app bar, we're going to add a text field. So we will start by creating a text editing controller called text controller. Now we will replace the text here with the text field and add the text controller to it. Now we will add a floating action button and when it is pressed, we will just print the text from the text field to the console. So now when I type test text up here in the text field and I press the save button, you will see test text in the console. Now we will go ahead and add SQF Lite to the application, which is what connects SQL Lite to it. We'll click terminal down here at the bottom and we're going to type in flutter pub add SQF Lite. And now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and install Path Provider as well, which is a plugin that helps you find commonly used locations on mobile file systems. We're just going to type in Flutter Pub Add Path Provider. All right, now that that's done, we should be able to go into our application and look at our PubSpec YAML file. And you should see SQF Lite and Path Provider in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit pub get one more time just to make sure everything did get installed correctly. Now let's go ahead and create our grocery model. We're going to go down here to the bottom of the page. I'm going to create a grocery class. We're going to add an ID and a name. We add the question mark to integer because ID can be null if we're creating it. And we'll go ahead and make name required. So now we're going to add a factory called from map. And we're going to add a method called to map. Okay, that should be it for our grocery model. Now we're going to create a database helper class, which helps with 
you guessed it, the database. Yay! So let's create the class and let's make it a private constructor, which will create a singleton or a class that only has one instance. We will put this at the very bottom after the grocery model. Now we will set up the variable that will hold the database initialization. First, we need to import SQLite into the file. Now we'll go back to the database helper class and add a few lines. So what this is saying is, if this variable doesn't exist, then it's going to initialize the database. Otherwise, it's just going to use the set variable. But we're missing a knit database, so let's go ahead and add that now. Before we do that, let's import a few things at the top. So now we will come back down to the database helper and create our init database. So to explain what the imports at the top are doing, the Dart IO import at the top provides support for directory. Path provider provides support for Git application documents directory, and path.dart gives support for join. So init database opens the database, which is groceries.db version one, and if it doesn't exist, we can run the onCreate method on creation of the database. So we need the onCreate method now. We'll put it below init database. So as is probably self-explanatory, this will create the groceries table when it creates the database. So now we are going to get the groceries from the database and display them inside a list of you. Let's put the get groceries method inside the database helper class. Then up here inside main, we need to ensure the widgets flutter binding is initialized. Now we are going to add a future builder into the body of the scaffold. So loading this so far, you'll see it just says loading. So we're going to add a ternary operator or a simplified if then statement to show a message when there's no data to display. And now it says no groceries in list. So obviously our list is empty at the moment. So let's go ahead and add the ability to add groceries to our database. Down here below get groceries, we're going to add an add method. And now we will add the text in the text field to the database when the floating action button is pressed. So now I'm going to type in apples up here and I'm going to hit save and there it is in the list. Now we will add the ability to remove a grocery item. We're going to make it to where if you long press on a grocery item, 
It will delete it from the database and remove it from the list. First, we will put the remove method at the bottom of the database helper class. And now we will add the long press entry in the list tile. So now I add a few more things to the list here. I'm going to add some bananas. And I'm going to add some oranges. And now I'm going to delete bananas by clicking on it and holding it. And there we go. So normally I would just stop here because you really don't need the capability to update a grocery item. You can just delete it and recreate it. But let's go ahead and do a quick and dirty update so you can see full CRUD capabilities. We'll go ahead and add the update method to the database helper. Now what we're going to do is when you short press or tap on the list tile, it's going to put the text in the text field so you can edit it and save it. Let's put a variable at the top called selected ID so we know when an entry is selected. Again, we put a question mark on integer because selected ID can be null if a grocery item isn't selected. Now we will add the on tap call to the list tile. So all this does when you tap on the list tile item is set the grocery name into the text field and then tells the app the current selected ID is the ID of the grocery item you tapped on. So we'll give it a test by just tapping quickly on oranges and we now see it's in the text field. Let's put some code in the floating action button for it now. So what's going to happen is when you press on floating action button, it's going to see if the selected ID is set. If it is, it's just going to update the grocery record in the database using the selected ID. If selected ID is null though, it's going to add a new entry. Let's give it a try. I'll click on oranges. I'll add in edited. I'll hit save and it updated it. I'll go ahead and type in bananas and hit save to show you that the ad still works correctly as well. So that's all the functionality, but as a bonus, we're going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit easier to understand. Let's start by adding a card around the list tile. I'm going to right mouse click on it. Show context actions. Wrap with widget and we'll add a card. That looks a little bit better there. And then what we can do is add some coloring to where when a grocery item is selected, it's highlighted. So what this is going to do is if an ID is selected, it's going to change that record to gray. Otherwise, it's just going to be white. So we will click on orange is edited and you'll see it is now gray. So what if you start editing a grocery item and change your mind? We could add a close button up here or we could add a cancel button, but I'm just going to make it to where if you click it again, it unhighlights and clears out. So in on tap here, we'll do an if then statement. So if you click on the list tile and an ID is not already selected, it will add the grocery name to the text field and set the grocery ID to the selected ID. If there is already a selected ID, it's going to clear out the text field and mark selected ID as null. So you'll now see clicking on it again, clears it out and removes the selection. Now it's not perfect. You'll notice that if I select this, and put that up there and then I select bananas. 
Bananas will even clear it out. In a real life scenario, we would probably either want to make sure that this one is just unselected or it goes ahead and selects bananas. But we're just trying to do a quick and dirty update example. So that's going to do it for this tutorial. We could write it a different way. We could also do it to where it stores into a list, which would be fewer writes to the database. If y'all would like to see that way, let me know and I'll do a version of that as well. So you might also like this video if you want to check that one out. And also, if you're liking my videos and would like to see more, please consider subscribing. Thanks and I hope to see you in the next one.